Okay, so now we're going to address another modeling problem that periodically comes up, and that is how do you model the threads on the top of a plastic or glass bottle? So if you're wondering what I'm referring to, here's an image of a plastic bottle, and at the top where the cap would screw on, we have these round helix styled threads. Now the quick and easy way to create something like this, of course, is to create a helix spline and then use the profile shape that you want and then put all of that into a sweep nerve and then adjust that helix spline to go around the contour of the neck and the top portion here of your bottle. However, for this lesson, we're not going to be using that method. Instead, I'm going to show you another way to model these threads in place. So let's start out by using a cylinder. And right now this cylinder is going to represent the top portion of the bottle where the threads are going to be at. Now you can start at the bottom of the bottle and work your way up, or you can start in the middle, wherever you want. However, for this, because we're specifically dealing with the threads, I'm going to start at the top. So I'm going to take this cylinder and move it up a little bit. And right now the height is too tall. So I'm going to take this down to about a value of 75. And I want to go over to the caps tab and I want to turn that off. We don't need any caps for this. And I want to take the height segments to 14. And the rotational segments is way too much right now. We want to take that down to a value of 8. So we'll take our cylinder and make it editable. I'm going to go into a front view and more than likely you may have to change your shading. So all I did was just change the display here to Garoud Shading. And the next thing we want to do is grab the Rectangle Selection Tool. Be sure that you are in point mode for this. And we want to deselect the option here called Only Select Visible Elements. Now you want to keep in mind that this very top loop of points as well as the very bottom loop of points, we do not want to touch those or adjust those right now. So whatever you do, leave those exactly where they are. Okay, so since we're not going to adjust any of the points on the top or the very bottom, then we're going to start at this row right here. And what we want to do is we want to skip up four lines and select that fourth one. So we have this one selected here, and what we want to do is we want to count up four. So we'll go one, two, three, and here's the fourth one. So what we have here is three loops of points here that are not selected. So we want to do this again. We'll go one, two, three, hold down shift to select that next one. And then we'll go one more, one, two, three, four. So we'll select that one there. What we want to do now is we want to move these points in the plus X direction. And I want to move them in a value of five. So we'll come down here to the position value for X, and I'm going to type in a value of 5 and then hit Enter. So now what we need to do is select this next row of points here. So this bottom row is the first row that we selected. Now we want to start with the row directly above that one. So we'll select that row of points there. We'll go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll hold down Shift and select that row. Go up another four. One, two, three, four. And let's see, one, two, three, four. The fourth one is going to be the top one, but remember we don't want to adjust that one. So we'll just leave it as is. So now we want to move these points in a plus Z direction. So down here for the Z value, we'll type in a value of five. Hit enter. Now those points have been moved in a value of five. Now we want to come down here and select the next row up from this last one that we selected down here on the bottom. We'll select that row there and we'll move up four. One, two, three, four. We'll take this one and select it. Go up another four. One, two, three, four. So we'll take these points and now we want to push them in a negative X direction with the same value of five. So for the X down here, we'll type in negative five. And now we want to do one more. So we want to select this row here because it is the next one up from this very bottom row of points here. So we'll select this one here. 
and then we'll go up four. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. With those selected, we want to go in a negative Z direction. So we'll type in negative five for the Z. And now, if we grab the hypernerve and drop the cylinder into the hypernerve, there is our bottle cap. And you can see if I just kind of like twirl this around, you can see that it is working. Okay, so the rest of this bottle is actually pretty simple. We just need to go into edge mode. And what I'll do is I'll just select this top row of edges. We'll do a zero extrusion. Grab the scale tool and just kind of scale that in. Then we'll go get the move tool and just hold down control to extrude that downward. And of course, to shape off the bottle, what we could do is select the bottom row of edges on the outside here. And let's create the little lip here for the bottle cap to rest on. So we'll just extrude that down a little bit. And we'll make another zero extrusion. Grab the scale tool, just scale that out just a little bit. Extrude that down. Make another zero extrusion. Scale those in. And let's see how far do we want to go with that. We want to go a little bit more, about right there. Grab the move tool again, hold down control, and just extrude. And what we'll do is we'll go down one more, grab the scale tool, and kind of scale that out. Extrude down. Scale it out again. All right, so obviously you get the idea where I'm going with this. I'm just kind of just knocking out a quick bottle shape here. So we'll go back and we'll probably need to refine some of these edges. We turn the hyperner back on. Okay, we probably need to adjust that a little bit there. So what we'll do we can go into polygon mode and grab the loop selection to select that row of polygons there. And we'll just pull them in just a little bit. And we may need to add a loop cut. So I'm gonna grab the knife tool. I'm gonna go into loop mode. And I wanna make the cut right in the very middle of these uh, selected polygons here for this edge. So I'm gonna hit shift to lock that in place. And then I'm just going to type in a value here of 50. And then we're just going to click in the viewport. That'll make the cut for us. Turn the hyperner back on. Okay, that looks a little better. And to be honest, I think this bottle, I think the shape of this bottle is a little too small. These threads are rather large for this shape of the bottle. So just really quick, I'll go in here and just kind of clean this up a little bit. What I'll do is I'll just delete those points there. I'll go back into edge mode and I'll just reshape the bottom of this bottle really quick just to make it look right. So we'll extrude that down to about there. Make another one. We'll just scale that out with the scale tool. Extrude down again. Scale that out. Okay, so I think this here is a lot bigger and that looks a little better. All right, now we need to reshape the top of this as well. So what I'm gonna do is grab the knife tool in loop mode and what we'll do is we'll just make a cut up here around the top and then another cut in the middle of that round lip. Turn the hypernerb on. That should help smooth things out a little bit. Now if we want to, we can actually take this top portion up and I think it would probably be a good idea to do that. So I'm just going to go into point mode and I'm going to grab this top row of points right there and I'm just going to push those up. And 
and that'll just give us a little more of a lip up there at the top. Alright, so let me just pull this up above the grid just to see a little better. Okay, so we'll just quickly finish off the bottom of this bottle. So we'll just go into edge mode with those uh, edges selected on the bottom. And what I'll do is I'll just take this and just kind of scale these in a little bit. Just kind of scale that down. Grab the scale tool and just kind of scale these in a little bit to about right there. And we'll do another zero extrusion. Grab the scale tool. We could just scale these new edges inward. And if you want to, we could actually probably take this and make another zero extrusion and pull these new edges inward but also take them up just to put a little bit of a rounded dome shape in the bottom of this bottle. Do another zero extrusion. Scale these inward. Just kind of push those up maybe just a little bit. And then to finish that hole off what we could do is just use the close polygon hole tool and then just click once those edges are selected and that will fill that in for us. So we'll turn the hypernerves back on just to make sure that there isn't any artifacts on the bottom. That looks pretty good. And if you want to, what we could do is just make a little cut with the knife tool in loop mode. And we can make a cut here to tighten that up. We can make another one there. And that will tighten up the bottom for us. You can see it's just kind of adding a little bit of a bevel there. And we could probably do this up here at the top as well. Make a cut about there. And that's probably the only place where it's actually going to show. Alright, so there's our weird looking bottle. Alright, so there's the outside of our bottle. And I guess we could go a little bit further with this. And what we could do is actually uh, give it some thickness on the inside as well. So what you want to do is just be sure that you're in edge mode. And we want to go on the inside and we want to find these edges here that we extruded downward off the top of that lip. Grab the loop selection and we want to select those edges there. Those are the edges that are coming down on that extrusion that we made from the top of the lip. So those are the edges that we want there. And we want to go to a front view again. And what we want to do here is we want to change the display back to lines because we want to see the inside. Now you can tell where those edges are on the inside that we have selected. So I'm going to grab the move tool again and I'm going to extrude these down to there. I'm going to make another one there. I'm going to grab the scale tool and I want to scale this inside edge up so it's in line with the outside. Make another one, scale that one up as well. And what we're going to do is just continue on following the flow of edges until we get down to the bottom and then we'll just close the hole off like we did on the outside of the bottle. Pull those inward and you can see over here on the outside I'm just following the flow of edges. Make one more down here towards the bottom. We'll scale that in. And then we want to push that up. Scale that one in. Push that one up to there. Scale that in. And then we need to go on the inside here of our bottle. Go down to the bottom. We're on the inside now and we want to choose the close polygon hole tool, close that in, turn the hypernerve back on. Alright, so there's the inside of our bottle. Alright, so I suppose what we could do is apply a glass material to this and render it out just to see what it looks like. Alright, so I've decided to render this bottle in V-Ray 
And what I have here is just a very simple three light setup with area lights. So I'm going to go ahead and render this out so we can see what it looks like. And the output here, I just want to see, we've got 1920 by 1080. So I'm just going to render this out. All right, so the bottle has finished rendering. So let's zoom in here to 100% and let's take a look at it. All right, so there's our nice blue bottle with our threads up at the top that look really good. And we've got the lip there and it comes down and everything looks really good. Now earlier, I also made up another quick portion of a bottle. Uh, these threads here up at the top are a little larger and a little sharper than the ones that we made on this bottle here. You can see that these here are rounded more. This one here has ones that are a little more pronounced, a little more sharp, a little more defined. But I also used the same blue V-Ray shader on this one that I did on this one here. All right, so that's how you create the threads on the top of a bottle. And I think that about wraps up this lesson, and thank you for watching.